three technical terms that could scare the life out of anyone. Well, let's see if we can simplify them, folks. Reliability, it simply means same test if we do it again, same test, same result. So if we follow a particular protocol and we measure accurately, we should get the same result from the same test. That's what reliability means. Validity, we're gonna go into more detail of this, by the way, but validity is slightly different. It's measuring what it claims to measure. Measuring what it claims. So if we're doing, I don't know, a hand grip dynamometer uh, test, is that a test of whole body strength, for example? We can ask whether that's a valid claim or not. And with practicality, I mean, it's much simpler, really. It's about the ease of completion, okay? Ease of completion. So to be clear, the, all three of these can be advantages and disadvantages to different tests. And we want to just want to explore a bit of detail around each one. So with that in mind, let's bring my sort of green block down here for reliability. We've already said that it is a test that, which if replete, that same test will, will render the same result. So we want to think about the factors affecting what could cause what could cause reliability to go up or go down? And here's some factors that you might want to consider. The first one, and we've looked at this term in other sections of this course, is calibration and particularly of equipment. Is the equipment actually measuring accurately? Of course, if it's different from one day to another, we'll get a different result. So for example, if weighing, weighing scales are out, our BMI result may well be different. What about participant motivation? Is somebody really driven on one day and then far less so on another day? That's a problem, right? Because then you're gonna get a completely different output and you can't compare those results, okay? So that might be, for example, someone giving up too early on a multi-stage fitness test, let's say. What about the conditions? Are we doing a 30 meter sprint test with a flying start into a headwind on one day and with a tailwind in another? That could affect the actual result. What about doing an Illinois agility test indoors on dry surface one day and outdoors on grass on a wet surface on another? Those conditions are different and will affect the results. What about things such as the experience, the experience of the administrator? Now, if you think about this, this is actually a really tricky one to control because if you are the person putting together the test and running the test, the first time you do it, you're probably a bit shaky, you're not really sure what you're doing. And of course, the sixth time you do it, you're probably more experienced, you know exactly how it works. So that might lean into some of the results being different. You might become more accurate with timing, for example. And then <clears throat> this one relates to that, and it's compliance with the protocol. In other words, did you, in both examples of te the test conduct it in exactly the same way. So for example, you didn't insist on a, on a wall toss test that the participant was uh, one meter away in one day and then you did on another. These factors are gonna affect um, reliability. Now, validity, I don't really wanna say much more about it. It's about the, the accuracy of the measuring and whether that can be applied to what it's intended. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples really on validity. I mentioned hand grip dynamometer. Does it measure whole strength? What about something like our vertical jump? We often say that a vertical jump test, for example, is a, is a measure of power or elastic strength. But isn't it simply a measure of leg power or leg elastic strength? What about the sit and reach test? We say it's about flexibility. Or is it to do with lower back and hamstring specific flexibility? And that really leads us neatly into considering that validity. And then finally, folks, I'm gonna talk about practicality. I'm gonna draw you down here and I'm gonna talk practicality. Okay, so what makes a test more practical or less practical? Well, the first thing I guess is how expensive it is. Now you will notice probably in a school slash college session uh, setting, you're probably conducting tests which are reasonably affordable because schools can afford to actually run them. What about the time taken? We find that things like the one repetition max for a whole group of um, students, for example, takes absolutely ages and might not be um, um, convenient. What about the time taken, I was talking about performing before, what about the time taken to set up? Think about your Illinois agility test, a little while, doesn't it, to set that up? What about things like, what about things like time to analyze? How easy is it to actually analyze? Are you having to sketch graphs or are you simply taking a number and comparing it to a table, which of course would be more practical? And then finally, 
we need to be thinking about the number of participants. Now I've kind of intimated this already number of participants. Now some um, some tests really lend themselves to multiple participants. Multi-stage fitness test is a good example. But how many can do it at one time? I'll say again, your one rep max test, although very relevant and very, very useful, if you're going to do it for multiple lifts, it's really hard to do in the gym with a whole group of students, for example, because there's just not enough machines. People need to be lifting all the time, and therefore it's kind of impractical for that reason. Um, other things, such as your multi-stage fitness test, is kind of everybody in one go, right? So some interesting points to think about there. I uh, hope that's been useful.